Hi, I'm Ben Stallings, and I'm going to be talking about building raised garden beds out of dimensional lumber. Um, I'm, I'm going to be using a model that is at one sixth scale. So this is an eight foot long two by four, and at this scale, a six foot tall person like myself would be about this tall. So. Um, the main reason why people use dimensional lumber to build raised garden beds is because of the price. Uh, an eight foot long two by four like this currently retails for $2.50, which means that you can get all the supplies for a typical raised bed for under $10. Um, but the other advantage of using standard size boards is that you can build your beds to a standard size, um, which means if you've got multiple beds that are all the same size and shape, then any structures that you build to go over those beds, like a low tunnel or a, a cold frame or a chicken tractor, can just be picked up and moved from one bed to another without needing to modify um, their size and shape. Um, that's in theory. In practice, a couple of different things can happen. Um, what I see when I look at community gardens and, and places that have used these uh, uh, two by fours in construction um, is that typically they start out by building the beds like this with the long ends overlapping the short ends. And um, <clears throat> the problem with that is that now your bed is slightly wider than four feet wide and the typical person can only reach two feet from the edge um, without stepping in the bed. And so if someone has shorter than average arms, then they wind up having to step in the garden bed, um, which defeats part of the purpose of building a raised bed in the first place. Um, and so the easy way around that is to just overlap the boards the other way, like this. Now your bed is uh, exactly four feet across, um, but it's slightly longer than eight feet. And so um, if you haven't been consistent from one bed to the next, now you've got a different shaped bed than you started with. Um, the other problem is that the soil can start to expand when it gets wet or freezes, and then um, the boards can start to bulge in the middle or to come apart at the corners. And so the typical solution for that is to take stakes, stick them in the ground, um, in the middle of the long sides and in the corners. But unless you're consistent about how you do that from one bed to the next, again, you've got an inconsistency that can interfere with moving structures around. Um, the other problem that I got into in my article about the case for sinuous raised beds um, is that this is not an optimal amount of edge around this garden bed. It's a, it's a convenient size to build, but um, as permaculturalists, we try to, uh, try to optimize the amount of edge. And even if, even if the cost of the materials is not a limiting factor, you've got the cost of ongoing maintenance of the path all the way around the outside. Um, if this is a grass path, then you've got to trim the grass away from the, uh, away from the boards. If it's mulch, then you've got to maintain the mulch every year, um, multiple times a year. And uh, so it, having less path in a situation like this, especially when you've got lots of these garden beds, um, having less path is an advantage. And the, the way to do that is to make the bed longer, extend it lengthwise, and then bend it around corners as necessary to fill the space. Um, but when you've got a closed shape like this, that's closed on all four sides, it becomes a challenge to extend it because if you if you want to extend this this way that's not a strong connection right there uh, you can overlap it but you've got to overlap it consistently on both sides or else your bed is now a different width than it was before um, or you can put a stake here but then you've got to attach the boards to the stake and um, and then what do you do about going around a corner it becomes a challenge and my solution that I proposed in the sinuous garden bed article um, sinuous by the way meaning meaning winding a winding shape that winds back and forth um, the solution I proposed there was to just put the stakes in in advance in a four foot grid uh, put the stakes in before you put any boards in and then just attach the boards to the stakes that are al already the right length apart for the boards which sounds like it makes sense until you try it and then you find that, that the boards have to be either on one side or the other of the stakes, and they can't be consistently on one side or the other. Um, as you wrap that shape around a corner, you wind up with some boards on one side, some boards on the other side, and now, again, you're back to the situation where your beds are not a consistent size and shape, and you lose that advantage 
that the standard size lumber gave you in the first place. So I have an alternate proposal, and that is that instead of putting the posts on a 4x4 four four grid, you put them slightly closer together and offset from each other and attach the boards to them in a pinwheel arrangement. Now, this is it's this side up. So notice the top is flat, the bottom has stakes that stick down into the ground, and this is uh, intended to be sloping ground here, represented by this bed going down a little bit farther. It's the same height evenly across the top, but a different height on this side because the ground is lower. Um, by attaching the boards in a pinwheel arrangement to the stakes, that means that each board is on the inside of one stake on one end and on the outside of this other stake on the other end. Every board is attached that way. And um, that gives you some additional strength against expansion, but it also um, means that anytime you want to expand this, this winding shape in any direction, you just attach more boards to the stakes. There's always an exposed surface ready for you to add boards to. Um, so there's never a question of where the next boards go as you expand. And uh, one of our permaculture principles is to start small and build on success. So uh, this is an example of starting with a, a system that you can add on to later. Um, let's see, looking at my notes here for a moment here. So um, all of the beds are slightly smaller than four feet across, which solves the problem of being able to reach the middle. How much smaller depends on what size stakes you're working with. In my article about this, uh, I'm showing four by four stakes, in other words, uh, three and a half inches square. Um, but in this model, I'm using two by two stakes instead because that's the size of balsa wood that I was working with. I couldn't make a four by four stake. So these beds <coughs> in this model are actually slightly larger proportionally than the ones in the article. Um, but uh, in any case, the boards are all exactly four feet long which means that if you start with an eight foot board and cut it in half, you've got no waste. There's no, no wood left over at all. Um, and that can be an advantage. You don't wind up with a lot of scraps. Um, but the main advantage comes when you start to add structures to the top. So uh, these structures that I've built uh, for the model are built with the, the boards pinwheeling the opposite direction around the stakes, which means that when these stakes extend downward, like this, below the bottom of the structure, they don't interfere with the stakes on the garden beds. They, the stakes sit neatly on the opposite side of the corner from the existing posts holding the garden bed together. And um, so that gives you something to, that gives you a way to attach the top to the bottom. If this were a chicken uh, tractor or something like that where you need to keep pests out, um, you would be able to attach the top to the bottom securely through the stakes rather than through the sides. The sides just sit on top of each other. Um, in this case, this, is a, this, is, this model is representing a cold frame, um, and the, the Great Nuts box is standing in for a standard 4x8 sheet of plywood, um, which can be made into this shape with just three cuts and no waste whatsoever. Um, all of these pieces are four feet wide, attached on the inside of one stake and the outside of the other stake. And, and that model of construction continues all the way throughout. And that means that you can take this, set it, set it on top of any one of these garden beds. Um, so you need a cold frame here, then later in the season you need a cold frame here. You just move it from one spot to the next. And you can set it down and then turn it with a, a kind of a twist to have it lock into place. If this were a chicken tractor instead, you might need to turn it at an angle, uh, turn it 90 degrees so that the chickens can run this way instead of the other way, um, build it up on, on higher stakes so that they can run underneath, and so on. Um, as another example, here's a trellis that you could set on top of one garden bed for part of the season, or for, for one season uh, for your vining crops, and then for another season uh, you do a crop rotation and now your vining crops are over here or maybe you want the crops to vine over the path because the path is the same width as the beds, the, uh, the trellis can work in either position. So um, I hope that this system uh, is useful and uh, let me know what you think in the comments and I'll um, 
I'll be building a full-size version of this later this year, and I'll hope to post more videos then. Thank you very much.